but both of these people are driven by this deep love for humanity. And you're going to find that most great people are driven this way. It isn't, I mean, it's just the really terrible people through history who don't last very long, by the way. Even when we look at someone like, I mean, think about the worst dictators of the 20th century. For some reason, many of them are just piled and packed into that 20th century. We can think about, of course, everyone's favorite historical bad guy, think about Hitler, we can think about Stalin, we can think about Mussolini, we can think about Pol Pot. All of these people are driven not by a love for humanity, but by a love for, for self which isn't really a love at all. It's difficult to, to love yourself and to hate humanity. It's like it's difficult to love, and well, it seems to be easier to, to love humanity and to hate oneself because we can project the things that we idealize into society, but we hope maybe if we can make that better, maybe by, by making the world better, we can make ourselves better, which is, which is backwards. But at least it's driven by, by an intense love for people. But that takes a really deep intellect to be able to get your head around. It's a really easy thing to just pursue your own good or what you think is your own good. But of course, we can't even know what our, what our own good is. You have to have a really deep intellect to be able to, to figure that out. But to be able to think deeply is to develop a level of sadness because like you think about someone like Martin Luther King Jr., incredible intellect. This guy earned a doctorate by 27 years old. That's not an easy feat to do, man. And yet this guy is able to motivate people through a deep love for humanity. It wasn't, it wasn't even a hatred for the people that he was up against. It was a deep sadness for the people he was up against because they didn't really, in his mind, know what they were doing. People who do evil things oftentimes don't even realize what it is that they're doing. They're reacting to trauma or they're reacting to the world around them or they're reacting to what they think is their own self-interest. But... For the most part, people who do evil things tend to not really understand fully what it is that they're, that they're doing. And that's, there's a knee-jerk reaction on that because it's easier for us to say, oh, they just don't understand. Not that we necessarily do, but it's actually true. A lot of times they don't really understand. <coughs> Bless you. And it's, it's difficult to, to now all of a sudden think about our enemies and say, man, you're, you're, you're behaving the way that you are. Let me try to figure out why and to understand why people do the things that they do. Because if you don't understand why people do the things that they do, then we have almost no chance of understanding why it is that we do the things that we do. Because we have to understand that we're not separate and distinct from the whole world around us. People do what they do for, for reasons. The same reason that we do. We just, we just tend to think that our reasons are good and everybody else's reasons are bad. Now, sometimes other people's reasons are bad and so are ours. And it's difficult now to say, study your enemies, understand why they are the way that they are. Because that does not necessarily mean that we therefore forgive them. Like Disney's doing this thing now where they're going back to all their old villains and then they're making like, you know, origin stories for them to try to explain why they are the way that they are. What was the one? Uh, no, the other one, the one from 101 Dalmatians. Oh, Corella. Yeah, Corella. And I, I never saw the movie. The, the one that came out, but apparently it explains why she is the way that she is and we have a level of sympathy for her. Okay, understand that even if we do, she, she murders puppies and she wears them as coats. We, that, that, I, I, I'm gonna guess that that part is left out of the movie. They probably don't show in the live action, here's why she is the way that she is, now here's what she does, here's what she does. It probably doesn't show them murdering the puppies and then stitching them together to make a coat out of them, but that's what she does. That doesn't mean that Understanding where someone's coming from or why they do what they do does not mean that we therefore excuse what they do. But there's a fear a lot of times on our part that if I try to understand why my enemies are the way that they are or why the cruel people of, of life are the way that they are, there's this fear almost on our part that we're going to somehow sympathize with them and, and, and excuse what they do. No, you don't have to. You shouldn't. It takes a deep intellect to be able to understand why people are the way they are, why they do what they do, and yet, and, and have some sympathy for them, and have some sadness for them even. Martin Luther King Jr., I mean, terrible things were happening. Man. When you talk about the, the, racists, the racists in the South, when you read what he wrote and you hear what he said, it wasn't, hey, kill all the racists. It was, these guys just don't understand what they're doing. They don't, they don't fully understand. But notice how he didn't say, so therefore we should just, you know, accept them as they are. No, there, there wasn't that either. Here's why they are the way that they are. 
Here's why we need to not be that. To be able to hold all of these emotions in your heart at one time takes a deep intellect. To be able to hold sadness, to be able to hold sympathy, to be able to hold anger, to be able to hold maybe more than anything, justice and truth, which are emotional values. To be able to hold all of these things in your heart at the same time and still manage a life. That's difficult. That's really difficult. This is the story, by the way, of Tinkerbell. Yeah, why is Tink behave the way that she behaves? She can only hold one emotion at a time. That's why she's, and she feels them in extremes. This is why she's absolutely head over heels in love with Peter Pan. This is why she then all of a sudden turns into complete rage towards, towards Wendy. And then she, be, and then she, she um, gets really jealous towards Peter Pan. And then she's really silly. She can't ever feel more than one emotion at a time. She has an immature intellect, which is also part of the story of Peter Pan as well. So the, the, the desire, therefore, is not to be Tinkerbell. I know as much as we like to say, oh my gosh, she's so cute. She's a horrible individual. She tries to kill people because she's jealous. She tries to murder Wendy because she's jealous, and yet we'll sit there and go, she's so cute. No, no, she, she has a murderous rage that she's able to hide behind a cute face, which, by the way, is a, is a metaphor a lot of times for life. We'll forgive almost anything from some people because they look a certain way. But to be able to hold all of these things at once is, is the challenge of life a lot of times for us. Because if you feel sadness and you feel sympathy um, and then you feel empathy, man, even harder. Because, you know, I was telling you last period, I mean, if you remember only one thing I ever teach you, man, I, I, I hope it's this, that, that demons are going to inhabit your wounds. That the demons of your life inhabit your wounds. The things that you feel that, that hurt you and make you jaded and angry and resentful, that's where the demons of your life are going to live. And until you heal those wounds, those demons are going to live there and guide your life and direct your life. You're going to find yourself lashing out, being angry, resentful, full of contempt. But once you're able to heal those wounds, you can finally exercise those demons out of your life, the things that haunt you. But again, it takes a deep intellect to be able to, to feel those things and to, and to be willing to, to pursue that. And so for, for Dostoevsky, that's what a great person is. A person who can feel all of these emotions of life feel all of the empathy and all the sympathy and all the anger and all of the love and all of the everything at once and yet still maintain this life on earth. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?